until Wednesday. So here's here's kind of the timeline just to reset. Teams can re-sign their O free agents. For example, I think the Jags just put out a, a, an official press release saying they've retained, I think, three of their players that were previously on the team but were getting ready to be unrestricted free agents. Teams have until Monday at 10.59 a.m. Central Time to sign those dudes back to contracts before they can officially hit the open market and be bid on by other, every other team, or, or at least begin negotiations. That's what legal tampering is supposed to be for instead of, you know, Prime 47 in Indianapolis during the Combine working some negotiations out or putting the putting the initial talking points in place for the structure of a deal or even going to the Senior Bowl in Mobile, right? But that's illegal tampering versus legal tampering. So there's a two-day negotiation window that will start noon Eastern, 11 Central, on Monday. Teams will have until March 11th at 4 p.m., Eastern, or excuse me, 4 p.m. Central. 4 p.m. Central on March the 13th. I'm sorry. March 11th is is Monday. March the 13th is Wednesday. So until 4 p.m. on Wednesday, teams can continue the legal tampering period and then technically free agency opens. So are you expecting reports on Monday about the Titans making transactions and signings? It's not just because they have a ton of cap space. The vibe is that they're going to be aggressive, that they're calling a lot. They're calling a lot of different teams about a lot of different players that the Raiders have been in contact about the seventh pick and things like that. And and what kind of player transactions could be involved in a situation like that? They were sniffing around Mike Evans, as were several teams, right? Because he was going to be the best wide receiver available. They contacted the Chiefs about Legereus Sneed, according to multiple reports, because he's on a franchise tag situation and. Um, can be had for a trade. There is also some scuttlebutt about Legereus Sneed having a knee situation, but nothing real concrete there. So I hesitate to get into that where Michael Thomas is roasting a Saints beat reporter yesterday for just taking what the organization gives him and printing it. When the news actually comes down, I mean, I would expect before Wednesday, you'll know a good bit about your free agency class, whether it's, Monday right off the top or Tuesday at two o'clock or whatever. Like, I don't know when these things are going to be dispersed out or officially agreed to terms upon, but you'll have basically a flurry of news and the Titans are going to be involved in it before Wednesday officially opens the free agent period. Technically, if you could predict the biggest swing, the Titans take in free agency, this offseason, mm. where would it come? At what, what position? Well, just position. Yeah, you don't have to give me a player. Just what position? And I can't cop out by just saying defensive back because that gives me corner and safety both. I'm still inclined to say wide receiver. And and that's just kind of, that's just kind of gut feeling. That's not Well, that's I mean, talking to Brian Callahan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an informed guess. But I want to make sure that I'm I'm clear about it, that it's as much a guess about anything because something could happen. They could uh, get an opportunity that we didn't expect. A Chris Jones uh, free agency situation is kind of out there in ways that don't fit the conventional thinking about the Titans. But could it happen? I mean, I don't know. They'd be dumb not to at least check in on Chris Jones or Christian Wilkins or players like that. I thought it wasn't available, Buck. No, we've talked about this. Yeah, I know. I just like making you feel bad for... Going at that caller for I even go for at him. having the gall to suggest Christian. No, he's not available. He's I didn't not available. Say How it dare that you way. bring him up? You, that is not the way that I said it at all. You, I already have a tone problem. You're not allowed to give me a worse tone problem than people think I actually have. All right, so Move off. If the biggest swing is going to come at receiver, okay, one of those is off the board in Mike Evans. Beyond Calvin Ridley, who would fall under that? I mean, I. I think people are going to think a big swing is twenty million dollars for a Hollywood Brown, right? Sure. Like that's and and Blaine and I kind of went back and forth about this yesterday. Not not really went back and forth, but just kind of were talking through the idea of just because Calvin Ridley's the best wide receiver on the market, does he actually get one of these twenty two to twenty five million dollar deals? Because he happens to be the guy that's available at the time. Jacoby Myers did not get a Tyree kill contract because he was the best available wide receiver free agent last year. Jacoby Myers, I think got paid 
somewhere in the ballpark of 16, 16 and a half million dollars on an average annual basis. So there's nothing, nobody's going to just pencil Ridley in unnecessarily, even though you can kind of tell where this is going to end up. Ridley, a better player than Jacoby Myers. Agreed. Was a weaker free agency class at the top at wide receiver last year. Agreed. So just informed or educated guess, we'll call it. Wide receiver feels like something that they're going to be, and I don't even think it's a swing, just grabbing at, right? Left and right in free agency in the draft. So who who do we consider a swing at wide receiver? Ridley, Hollywood. Hollywood's more of a kind of, you're betting on him a little bit, yeah? That, it's almost the definition of a swing. Okay. So Ridley. I would consider Hollywood, well, I don't know. It, the Ridley thing is so weird because he's 29 and he's missed so much football and he had drops at the beginning of the season and then it ironed out because he has twice as many touchdowns as the yeah. next available free agent wide receiver. He so was really productive last year. But the Jags offense was not. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are some problems there. If you go back and watch them in the red zone in particular, there are hideous drops, and Ridley's a part of this. There are hideous drops left and right that it's I can't pin on Trevor Lawrence, and Trevor Lawrence is going to have to shoulder the blame, but, like, he's putting the ball there for them to catch it. And it's not just Ridley, but there was there was a lot of disappointing elements to the Jags offense last year. Ridley wasn't one of them. Ridley not, wasn't one of them. He's not a disappointment, but I'm saying he's not he's – not, Perfect is all I'm trying to get across, right? Right? He's no. not DeAndre Hopkins where he's going to make you right 11 times out of 10. Calvin Ridley is a good player. He's a very good – he has been a very good player at points in his career. And he was a very productive member of the Jags offense last year, but a Jags offense that wasn't – it just didn't look right. And the Christian Kirk injury obviously threw them out of kilter even more. He had not played football in almost two years. Correct. He came in. 1,000-yard season, eight touchdowns. Calvin Ridley had a good season. Yeah. Uh, Shane on the FNM Bank chat says, Mooney from the Bears would probably be a swing at receiver. But I don't consider that a swing. I, I consider that a cost-effective option. Like you know? a Tyler Boyd almost. I, I would put Mooney more in the category of a Tyler Boyd. I think Hollywood has the biggest variance here. And that's that's including somebody. My point with Calvin Ridley is it's just a, such a unique situation that it's hard for me to kind of flesh out how much better he's going to get when he's already 29, right? And Hollywood's 26. And there is a legitimate difference for most wide receivers. Hopkins is the anomaly here. Mooney caught 31 passes for 414 yards and one touchdown last season. He had a 1,000-yard season with the Bears in 2021. He has not broken 500 since. But like, are you? Are what are you looking for? Is the question, and this is only something that they can answer, right? Are you looking for somebody who can be your next bridge veteran wide receiver, top flight wide receiver? Because Calvin Ridley fits more that mold as Hopkins is in an expiring deal. And the, I mean, I don't know that they wouldn't keep DeAndre past this year. I don't know how he feels about the situation. It's just kind of a thing to pay, pay attention to. So Calvin Ridley would kind of help them bridge that gap into the future, where then you can bring in draft picks. You still have a vet at the top who can be, for all intents and purposes, your number one wide receiver, or at least an outside X wide receiver, or whether he's you know catching more passes than whomever he's across from, whatever. Then Mooney, who's going to come in and be a, a veteran, different kind of a stopgap, right? More, more your Chris Moore NWI type or role, I guess is the way, because he'd have to play special teams. Now... They have already re-signed one free agent, and that's Morgan Cox. He agreed to a one-year deal yesterday, the long snapper. Uh, Tennessee Volunteers legend, NFL legend, long snapping legend, legend for all time, Morgan Cox. Did we expect the first free agency news of the offseason to come at long snapper? Honestly, he's the most obvious one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get it done. Yes. Why, why even worry about it, right? Why do you, you, you already have so many other personnel headaches. He's going to be, you know, 39, 40, but it's fine. Like, just continues to get it done. So Morgan Cox seems like the most obvious decision out there. Now, the special teams free agent discussion as uh, who was was it? Who agreed to a kicker contract yesterday that I saw? We were doing the show and I didn't I didn't take time to uh, go into it. It was a pretty substantial kicker contract. 
I did not. I guess I missed this. There was there was a kicker contract. Um, somebody will tell us in the chat before before we think of it or or can Google it. Um, not I don't want to sit here and Google it while I'm talking. But you've got Stonehouse coming off the injury. You have a big old question mark. Oh, Tommy Fairbairn, Texans. Uh, three years, just under sixteen million. Uh, big money for a kicker. So the kicker market is going to be something that you have to keep an eye on. Are you going to delve into undrafted rookie free agency? Is there a kicker that you feel if you're Rand Carthon and Chad Brinker and their staff? Uh, is there a kicker that you feel you want to spend draft capital on in this draft class? I would be lying to you if I've familiarized myself with the depth of kicker, although I probably should given this team's history. Returner, as I mentioned, Phillips is there. Are you going to give him another shot? It would be really tough to justify it to the fan base, wouldn't it? Would you like to hear the list of free agent kickers? I would. Will Lutz, at the top of that list, still under 30. Obviously, longtime Saints kicker is last year. Is he under year. 30? I feel like he's been there for so long. He is uh, 29.7, according to Spot Trek. Okay, <laughs> so I guess he'll be, he'll be 30 by the time the season starts. Was with Denver last year. He made 88% of his field goals in 2023. Uh, Greg Zerline, who is 36, Mm -hmm. was with the Jets, is a free agent. Nick Folk, like you said, who is 39, is a free agent. Greg Joseph, Titans legend, yep, uh, who had a great stint with the Vikings after the Titans, is 29. Titans legend. He's a free agent. Made 80% of his kicks, so dropped a little bit in 2023. Brandon McManus was with Jacksonville. He's 32. 81% rate for him last year. Made all of his PATs. Joey Sly of Washington, 79% clip last year. Not great. Randy Bullock is a free agent, was with the Giants last year. Titans legend. Chase, uh, there are three Titans legends on here. <laughs> uh, Chase McLaughlin. If you are an NFL kicker, odds are you probably you played, probably for, the played for the Titans at some, point. at some point in the 2019 season. Like I said, there was – I I should we do it just, just for fun to see if I could still do it a couple of years later to name all of them? Yeah, why not? Because there's seven of them. All right. Greg Joseph, Ryan Suckup, Ryan Santoso, Cairo Santos. My Brazilian brother. <sighs> Cody Parkey. Oh, my God. Titans legend Cody Parkey. How could I forget? Was Badgley a part of that, too? Because I think Badgley had he, two separate Titans stints. He was early 2021 season. Because he, I think the he Cardinals only played opener. the Cardinals game. Yeah. And he had a nice year last year with Detroit. Like he had a decent year. I can only name five. I think there were seven. That's okay. We don't need to get bogged down. Chase McLaughlin is a free agent. He was with um, Tampa. And Cameron Dicker, but he is an exclusive rights free agent Mm, for L.A. And Dicker, the kicker, is going nowhere. Oh, no way. Nowhere. He had a good year. He's young. Yeah. They're not going to let him go. Somebody said, what about Malcolm Butler, Buck? He's open to a return. So... Do you just bring back Folk? Do you sign one of those names? Does he want to play football? Because I would be like, hey, Nick, man, come on, just come on back. You know, if 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 he wants to continue to play football, the uh oh, who was the the nightmare kicker for, for the first game of the season in 2020? Oh, it was it was Janikowski. Not Janikowski. No, that's what I'm saying. Me. I didn't Goskowski. want to, Goskowski, yes. Steven Goskowski. I do Thank that you. all the time. It's it's tough. There's a lot of skis around the kickers. Steven Goskowski coming off a hip surgery that year and just happened to be down the road in Franklin made sense at the time. And, and he ended up working out. It was just a really, really bumpy first couple of games. Nick Folk, there were some moments when they needed a kick and he didn't make all of his kicks last year, but damned if he didn't get close. So while there are moments that you can pin specifically, or if you were a Titans fan, you might be inclined to pin specifically on Nick Folk. You know why I give Nick Folk a pass? Because when you're scoring 17 and a half points per game, everything, everybody else has a giant magnifying glass on them in ways that Nick Folk did not deserve last year. So if he wants to keep playing football, buddy, come on home. Is he getting, was he getting criticism? I mean, I feel like you got as much. There was an extra point that he missed that people pinned directly on him. That was the Colts game or the Texans game? I think it was the Texans game. I'd have to go. I think it was the Texans game. I really don't want to have to go back and relitigate those. I think it was the Case Keenum game. Yeah. Uh, But Nick, you got about as much as you could ask for. Oh, no, you got more. You got way more, especially given that because they they traded for him before he got cut from the Patriots. And given this team's just black hole at kicker for the last couple of seasons, he's a godsend. 
Rant, he's he's has more staying power, more longevity, a better resume than did Randy, even though with, in the year that Randy came in, he ended up working out real nice. Uh, Cade York is a free agent. Remember, the Titans brought him in to be on the practice squad yeah. at, in same time frame as when they traded for Fultz. Scooped up by the Giants, yeah? He was with the Giants for, for a time. He was on their practice squad. Again, Randy Bullock was their kicker. Uh, he was placed on IR in December uh, and then became a free agent at the end of the year. Uh, Joey Bananas, Joseph Bonanno, texted me. said, Harrison Mevis out of Mizzou would be the only kicker that I would either spend a seventh on or sign as a UDFA. Stud. Stud of a kicker. When it comes to long range, he nailed that like 64-yarder right. against K-State school record for Mizzou last year. I think it's the mid-range stuff that he struggled with. Crazy leg, Mevis out of Mizzou. Mm. But it'll be interesting if they scoop up a, an undrafted rookie like they have in the well, past. Well, they would, yeah. right? You're I, No matter who you end up signing, it, there's likely going to be a signee and a, a, a UDFA or a late-round draft pick. Will is in Nashville next. He wants to talk Titans free agency. Hey guys, I appreciate you taking the call. Sure. Um, I, you know, knowing my team, the Titans, if anything, they're practical. And I think, uh, you know, sewing up the offensive line at center is probably the most likely kind of swing that the Titans would make. You look at a guy like Andre James out of Vegas with a nice pass protection, um, I think a, a real solid fit for the team and definitely fits a, fits a need. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks for the call. I just don't think that's a swing, right? Like, I think that's, that's probably the – I want to feel most certain about the center that I'm signing. I don't. I don't want them to swing on a center. Swinging on a center would be getting a lesser proven player for a more cost effective, or or as in his words, practical contract versus a top of market free agent center contract. I'm good with the spend there. I'm I'm most good with the spend there of wide receiver, corner, kicker, safety. God knows this team needs pass rush help. D- interior defensive linemen, guards, tackles, whatever. Spend the the thing that you will be able to justify to me the most the next day is a top of market center contract for Will Levis. So it's just something he doesn't have to worry about. Average or the estimation for the market value by spot track for Andre James, the 26 year old former Vegas center, is a hair under nine million average annual value. It will it will end up being more than that, I would think. What just out of curiosity, can you pull up a market estimation for Lloyd Cushenberry, the Denver's, the Denver Center? Because I don't expect him just to just, I don't expect him to go back to the Broncos this year. They're they're working through their own financial situations right now. He's he's also in the same ballpark age as Andre James. Lloyd Cushenberry, twenty six years old, eight point two is the market value estimation. Okay, so I either would be satisfactory for me. I would assume that they would make more money. Um, Mitch Morse out there as well. Mitch Morse is the more proven commodity, but longer in the tooth. I just want them to lock up somebody that can be Will Levis's Ben Jones. And I know some of you want Benny back, but I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's feasible for for where he's at in his career, and just frankly looking for a longer term solution. Did you call him Benny? Yeah. Okay. What? Never heard him called referred to as Benny before. I mean, I feel like the vast majority of people in his life call him Benny. Is that something you want to harp on? Okay, no. I was just, if it was something you made up on the spot, I wanted to roast you for it. Okay. (laughs) Lucas's SEC stat of the day is next.